everyone in the previous class we discussed about the aspects related to permeability and groutability then we started our discussion on various types of uh, grouts where we saw that we have uh, suspension grout liquid grout and some of the special type of grouts and we were discussing about uh, these uh, special type of grouts so today let us continue with that discussion so first we will see few more uh, properties related to grouts and then we will see uh, that uh, when the grouting is successful or when should we stop that so grouts with improved uh, special properties uh, so in this connection first we will discuss about the grouts with improved penetrability so this type of grout is uh, capable of uh, penetrating the voids which are smaller than those uh, which are usually filled and also uh, such type of uh, grouts uh, can reach even farther if required uh, there are various methods which are used to increase the cement grout penetrability the first one is by reducing the viscosity and uh, shearing strength using the additives with a fluidifying action in the constant presence of the dry matter so in this case what is done is uh, the additives which are used to deflocculate bunches of uh, grain that forms the usual grouts so such products can be derived from the natural organic products like uh, sodium bicarbonate further various uh, methods uh, we have the second type uh, that is by increasing the resistance to filtering effects using activators uh, which reduce the grout filtration this is obtained by dispersion of grout grains or through the action of water retaining polymers on intergranular water third way to increase the penetrability of uh, the cement grout is by reducing the dimensions of the grains which are suspended in grouts this is the costly alternative which involves uh, the regrinding of material then we have the other type of the special property grout uh, which is the grout with improved mechanical strength so up till now we discussed uh, that how we can increase the cement grout penetrability and make the special type of grout now we focus on the grouts with improved mechanical strength so here we uh, these are used to obtain an and increased final strength of uh, grouts either by applying a treatment which does not modify uh, certain other characteristics such as uh, maybe the dry matter content or viscosity or by using the additives which are cheaper than the constructive products of the original grout then the next type is uh, the grout with improved resistance to washing out see wherever there is a um, large space and the flowing water is there we need to use such type of grout which has uh, the special property having improved resistance to washing out so these are used to avoid any washing out processes Uh, when the grouts are applied in largely open spaces which are filled with water and especially when the uh, there is a presence of uh, the flowing water so this type of grout is achieved by using hardened grouts which are almost uh, instantaneous and in some cases they halt the washing out process so controlling the hardening time also permits uh, the uh, control of the penetrability then the second way to achieve this is by improving the resistance through the use of flocculating or coagulating or thickening type of organic additives what these additives they do they improve the resistance to washing out tendencies and also increase the viscosity and cohesion 
and what happens when the viscosity and the cohesion is increased? Uh, the result is uh, that uh, there is the modified grout rheology as well as its behavior at the grout water separation surface. So, therefore, the complete result is going to be the improved resistance uh, to washing out. Some of the grouting parameters that one should be aware of, uh, these include uh, the first one is uh, the grout volume V per pass, then uh, the injection pressure which is represented by capital P and then the third one is rate of injection output which is Q. So, all these parameters, these can be determined by the set of injection points and these relate to one injection phase. Another aspect which one needs to keep in mind or the fourth parameter which should be checked is the time of injection T for one pass where this T is defined as V upon Q average. So, V is the grout volume per pass and Q be the rate of injection output. Now, this uh, time of injection must be in accordance with the setting time and therefore, uh, this is the fourth parameter which should be checked. This volume V, it depends upon the volumetric ratio which is defined as uh, the ratio of uh, the volume of the grout to the volume of uh, treated ground which integrates the porosity of the ground, the filling coefficient of voids for the phase under consideration and also the geometry of treatment which is given by spacing between holes and length of the injection pass. So, you see that when we need to go for the grouting, I mentioned to you that first we need to make a drill hole and then the grout is uh, placed in that drill hole with pressure. So, basically it becomes important to decide upon the spacing of uh, these drill holes and the length of the injection pass as well. The parameter Q which is uh, the speed, this must be limited so that the injection pressure remains lower than the ground fracturing pressure which depends upon the in situ stress and if this is uh, uh, not satisfied, if this condition is not satisfied then it is very obvious that what it is going to be. If the injection pressure is more than the ground fracturing pressure what will happen is that this uh, grouting process may generate more number of cracks in the rock mass. Then an experimental approach with regard to P and Q parameters uh, is recommended to assure that the treatment is accomplished correctly. There is the correlation between grout take field velocity and the velocity ratio for the grout curtains which uh, is given here. So, you can see that on x axis we have the longitudinal wave velocity and on y axis uh, grout take has been plotted and here you see that there is a term velocity ratio. So, corresponding to different values of velocity ratio the points were uh, observed and then uh, this correlation was established. So, this was done by using a pound of cement or cement plus filler per square foot of the cutoff. As far as the consolidation grouting is concerned, percentage void in fillings they are equal to 0 0.04 into grout take. The question comes here that what is the meaning of this term velocity ratio. So, this is the ratio between the field velocity which we measure from the seismic survey and uh, the velocity through the rock core which is measured in the lab. It is essential to perform both the measurements on uh, the saturated rocks. We know that uh, the in situ permeability uh, increases uh, with the reduction in velocity uh, ratio, but then this increase can be of the order of 10,000 times with a reduction in velocity ratio from 1 to 0.5 because of the fractures. 
the grout take depends upon uh, the field wave velocity which is very obvious and uh, for a rock mass which is not fully saturated some allowance must be uh, made uh, for uh, recording a lower velocity. Uh, further uh, there can be the record of higher velocities especially in the area of tectonic stresses. Then there are other factors which influence the velocity such as anisotropy joint system and the presence of wave guide. So, if there is a classification system which is solely based upon the velocity ratio, this uh, can be one of the major limitation of that particular classification system in view of uh, these parameters which influence the velocity. The effectiveness of uh, the consolidation grouting may be checked by observing the improvements in the rock quality designation which we represent by RQD and the field velocity after grouting. So, for example, if the velocity ratio is raised to a value more than 0.85 and the field velocity becomes more than 4300 meters per second we can say that the grouting operation is successful. Now coming to the effectiveness of grouting how we can check whether whatever that we have uh, done in the field uh, is effective because uh, this grouting process is kind of a blind uh, process because what we are doing we cannot really see. So, we need to check the effectiveness of grouting after uh, we are done with it. So, this may be checked by measuring the permeability in new drill holes. Now, if the permeability of the rock mass at uh, shallow depths uh, reduce to the extent uh, which we discussed earlier, you remember this particular figure in connection with the Lugian test. So, in case if we have the permeability let us say about 1 lugian or then we can uh, say that no further grouting is required or then maybe we can follow this uh, tree to decide uh, based upon the lugian test whether the grouting is further required or not. Then uh, for a rock mass of poor quality, so please keep in mind that what we are discussing is the rock mass with respect to the poor quality. The grout pressure of 1 psi per foot is usually a good compromise. So, you see that it was plotted which is uh, the depth in feet on x axis and maximum pressure at the top of the hole in uh, uh, PSI. So, here this is what is the rule of thumb which is 1 PSI per feet of depth. So, for this weak rock uh, or the rock mass of the poor quality grout pressure of 1 PSI per foot is usually a good compromise, but then uh, you have the average rock condition here and this one is for the sound rock. So, Based upon this we can take a call that what is going to be the maximum pressure at the top of the hole, drill hole. There are some disadvantages associated uh, with the working or uh, with grout because uh, the working is extremely blind as I mentioned to you we really do not know what exactly is happening. And because there is uh, very little control of where the grout is moving it is almost impossible to ensure whether the complete filling of all the rock voids has taken place or not. So, therefore, uh, we need to have some kind of check the success of the grouting. So, if we plot the pressure versus time curve then these three plots give us the idea whether the grouting is successful or not. Let us try to interpret them uh, one by one. So, first we take the A part of these plots. So, that I have zoomed and pasted it here. Uh, on x axis we have time and on y axis we have pressure. So, in this case what happens is that uh, the pressure increases slowly 
and uniformly until the pump capacity or the allowable injection pressure is attained. So, you see that it is uh, continuously increasing and therefore, it can be interpreted as a successful injection. Then the second category is as you see that pressure first increases and then it goes up to the maximum and then there is a drop. So, this represent uh, the broken out grout for example, a clay gauge filling a crack that might have ended in the free atmosphere which has been ex, uh, expelled out of the crack. Now, this can also be thought of as a successful injection. The third case is it first rises and then there is a drop and further it rises again or further it increases again. So, after the occurrence uh, which was there in the previous uh, slide that we discussed that the increase and then the drop it can be interpreted that the crack or seam or the joint subsequently got closed and uh, then we can say that the injection is successful. Further, uh, this uh, effectiveness of a grouting operation can be usually verified by making the check borings in the grouted zone and examining rock core extracts from these boreholes. This is uh, done exactly on the similar lines uh, when we do the uh, rock exploration, we drill and then we collect the rock cores and keep arranging them uh, in the order to get the idea about the geology. So, this was all about uh, the grouting through rocks. So, we discussed about the various support systems including shortcrete, uh, then steel sets, rock bolts and grouting through uh, rocks. Now, in the next class, uh, we will uh, start uh, the new topic which is the determination of uh, the in situ stresses uh, which are uh, there in the field. And uh, we have few in situ tests which we perform in the field and uh, we try to obtain the state of stress in situ uh, in the rock mass. So, we will take up one such test uh, that is flat jack test in the next class. Thank you very much.